Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining our latest webinar, Using Open API to Describe, Produce, and Consume Web APIs in Julia. I'm Misha Santamon, the Head of Marketing for Julia Hub. And today I'm joined by our presenter, Hanme Mohapatra. He's a principal software engineer at Julia Hub, and he's authored and contributed to Julia packages for parallel and cloud computing. I'm gonna turn things over to him right now so he can kick things off. Hanme. Thanks, Misha, uh, for the introduction. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to this webinar um, about using Open API in Julia. Um, today's webinar is uh, mostly structured to have uh, two parts. Um, we shall have a short introduction to Open API in the first part. And after that, uh, we will do some hands on um, using Open API and uh, building things in Julia. Um, Please feel free to type in your questions or comments uh, to the chat box uh, whenever you have them. Um, I will look at them mostly uh, after I finish the first part and before we move on to the next, but I will also try and look at them more often when possible. Um, the slides and notebooks are uh, available on my GitHub profile um, at this link um, under Tanmakin. Talks and more 2023 Open API, if you wish to use them uh, during the session. There are some notebooks uh, which you find useful during the session. All right. Um, I guess most of you would already know about Open API to some extent, um, but let us quickly recap a few key points. Um, it will be Good to also compare and relate it uh, to a few other similar standards, but we'll do that. And um, we will also see uh, where and how we use Open API in Julia and also in uh, Julia Hub. Um, all right, so Open API is about. Uh, APIs definitely, right? So particularly web APIs or HTTP APIs. Um, here is a schematic of a typical use case. Um, it shows a rather uh, simplistic view of what could be the architecture of a certain cab aggregator or a ride hailing app. Um, so it has a bunch of layered web services, um, billing, notifications, and uh, payments. Um, and on top of that, there are uh, passenger, driver, and trip management services. Uh, those are invoked from the front end UI layer, which is this. And uh, they are also made available through this API gateway uh, for external applications to use, which could be mobile devices or uh, could be third party apps. So the way these services talk to each other is via HTTP APIs. Um, or REST APIs. Uh, most of you uh, must already be knowing about the REST protocol, uh, which uses HTTP as a transport and uh, is a way of uh, implementing APIs over HTTP. Um, so Open API is actually an interface specification for such HTTP APIs. It leverages uh, REST principles, which is basically that the service holds resources, um, resources have states, and uh, resources and their states can be fetched by clients, and uh, the resources and their states can be created or changed via actions that the client perform. Um, the Open API is based on the same principles. Um, it has those some additional goals to add uh, to uh, uh, to add more structure to it and. Um, to make it uh, language agnostic and uh, make it uh, easy to read and decipher by both uh, humans and computers. And uh, uh, so it is basically, uh, it makes it expressive, easy to understand with uh, ample ways to document things. Uh, that's the goal of Open API. That's the value add of Open API over uh, REST. Talking about the origins of Open API, it was uh, uh, contributed uh, by a company called Smartware. They donated it to the Open API initiative. Um, it was named uh, Swagger earlier, and it was renamed to Open API when it was donated around 2015. 
Uh, the first release of open API specs happened in 2017 and uh, it was version 3. Uh, so the versions until version 2 are usually called uh, Swagger specifications. Um, Smartbear continues to focus on tools around open API and uh, they call their tools as uh, Swagger tools. Um, so now when we mention open API, it usually means the specification and uh, Swagger refers to the tools uh, around open API. One of the biggest selling point of open API is its simplicity and the fact that uh, HTTP and REST are so widely known and understood. It's no surprise that uh, according to some study around 70% of web APIs available today are REST APIs. Um, well, open API is not exactly same as REST, but uh, like uh, majority of those may already be open API compliant or it will be easy to make them open like compliant if they wish to. Um, open API, this can be considered a specification for REST API, loosely speaking, uh, though it is not exactly a REST API, it is somewhat narrower in scope. Um, the benefit of making uh, an API open, open API compliant is the advantages it gives around interoperability um, and the language agnosticness it brings and uh, the availability of tools around it, and things like that. Um, so uh, open API usually refers to this whole gamut of things. It is the specification. It also, uh, people refer to open API, uh, when they say open API, they also refer to uh, the code generator and uh, the tools around it to help using uh, open API. So this usually open API means this whole thing. Okay, so I think we have recapped Open API to some extent for our needs. Um, let's see how it compares with few other technologies in the same domain. And the first thing that comes to mind, uh, well, my mind is the SOAP. Uh, SOAP stands for uh, Simple Object Access Protocol. Um, in principle, it aims to do what REST does, mostly helping define and create um, web services. Um, it has the advantage of being transport agnostic. Um, probably not a very big advantage, but it can be used over HTTP, FTP, even SMTP and whatnot. Um, but it has a fixed XML message format, uh, whereas Open API and REST are uh, mostly JSON formatted, but uh, we can also use other formats uh, like uh, um, any other format along with it. It may not be a big, uh, disadvantage, but XML is usually difficult to handle and can be verbose. Um, SOAP also includes uh, several extension protocols for uh, security, addressing, and uh, federation. Those are good and uh, can be useful uh, in some cases. But uh, because of all these uh, uh, combined uh, specifications, uh, SOAP is usually complex and uh, heavy protocol. Um, and probably because of that, it is not as popular as the rest of Open API. But it uh, sure makes uh, perfect sense to use when those extensions add significant value. Um, and it is well worth the complexity and added heft in, in those scenarios. Um, then there are these other RPC oriented protocols GRPC, Protobuf, Thrift. And that's GraphQL for Graph APIs. Um, they have their niche uses, and they are more special purpose than SOAP or REST. And also that is why they're not as widespread. Um, some are becoming popular too, like um, gRPC and GraphQL. Uh, but again, they make sense where their niche is. Um, so gRPC is usually used for uh, performance microservice setup. And uh, GraphQL is used for accessing graph databases, data structures. Um, yeah. So with this overview, let's now focus on Open API for the rest of the webinar. Um, coming back to Open API, uh, specifically to um, what is available and uh, where it is used in Julia. Um, we have the Julia code generator plugged into the standard Open API generator. Um, that's available from the open API generator tech. 
Um, that's a standard tool um, which generates client and server code given a specification. Mm -hmm. The plugins available for a large set of languages there, and uh, Julia is also available there now. Um, then there is this package openapi.jl that contains the core OpenAPI protocol implementation. So uh, the code that the OpenAPI generator emits makes use of openapi.jl right, for the protocol part. And openapi.jl also includes some uh, developer tools, uh, which I'll see them going forward. There is also the swagger.jl, which uh, as you may have guessed, is the older implementation for OpenAPI spec v2. And most of the Julia packages have already migrated to OpenAPI, uh, but there are still a few using this older packages. Um, apart from these, um, there are many API integration packages that we have. Um, these are packages that have been generated by the OpenAPI generator. They either use openapi.jl or the older swagger.jl to provide a client library um, to use certain web services. So we have packages available for Cloud Infra, like uh, Kubernetes and Azure. And uh, then there are also packages for integrating with collaboration tools like GitHub, Slack, and et cetera. Um, many of these Julia packages that we just discussed uh, are uh, um, in use in Julia Hub as well. And uh, quite a few of those have actually been developed and open sourced uh, uh, by Julia Hub. Uh, Julia Hub, as you uh, may already uh, know, is an enterprise computing platform that we provide. It is for running large uh, Julia applications and bad jobs at uh, scale, uh, both on-prem and cloud. Um, we have things like uh, Julia IDEs and uh, notebooks and uh, private packet servers, um, data cataloging, and collaboration features also available as part of the product. Uh, you could visit our website, juliahub.com, to know more about it or reach out to uh, any of us. Um, because of the nature of the Julia Hub product, we use OpenAPI quite a lot, both internally and also um, for, um, for the very external integrations uh, that we have. All right, so um, that was a um, brief overview. Um, we can move to the second part of the webinar uh, where we'll do some hands on. Uh, but let me just check if we have any questions. Yeah. But I don't see any. Um, let's pause for a moment. And then we can... All right. Um, so the next part, uh, we will um, um, go through uh, two demos. Um, um, I plan to first uh, demonstrate how to use an already available web service, which has an open API spec, which is published. That should give a good overview of the basics, uh, particularly what the specification consists of, um, how the open API generator works, and uh, how an open API client is created and used in Julia. And uh, next, we shall try and define something ground up. Uh, we will define one open API specification of our own. We'll create a, a web service based on that and deploy that, and also invoke that from a client. Um, we walk through the steps for the first part uh, about consuming a web service. I plan to use the GitHub open API specifications. Uh, that actually is a very large so, uh, set of APIs, uh, but they're very well defined, well designed. So I think it's, an, it's a good example. Um, I have a few notebooks available and I'm going to switch to the, that to explore this part. All right.
so uh, in this notebook uh, we shall uh, fetch the open api specification and examine it and then when we shall generate the julia client package and uh, then examine the generated code and the docs and then use it uh let's start clean up things um so we need the open api package uh but uh, since i've already added it uh comment this out um so it's already there in my environment i can start using it uh the github spec is available at this uh repo this is the repo uh but we are just interested in one file which is this and we're going to fetch it and uh, store it locally. Uh, now let's examine the spec. So we can, uh, so the spec is a JSON file. Uh, so we can look at it either uh, by just uh, opening it in any editor, or we could also use some tool. Uh, this, uh, there is this uh, Swagger UI. Uh, there are other tools also, but Swagger UI tool is uh, inbuilt with Open API package, and we shall see how to use that. Uh, first, let's uh, let's just try and see it uh, as a text file. So, so this is what uh, Jupyter um, renders for the JSON. It also renders it quite nicely. Um, so there are different sections here. Um, there is a section for info, which gives the version number, and um, it has some um, license information also then there are tags um, so tags are sort of uh, api groups um, so an api can be tagged with one or more uh, groups uh, so there is a group for actions uh, so these are endpoints to manage github actions then there is a group for activity so these are activity related APIs. similarly uh, um, there's a tag for apps and billing and so on and so forth so these are basically api groups um, then the server where the API is hosted is there in the server section. And uh, there are pointers to some docs. And then there are paths. Uh, so paths are the actual like, API endpoints. And each path is typically a resource in REST paradigm. Um, the path combined with the uh, REST action verb makes one API. All right, so these are all uh, the API endpoints which are available in the GitHub API spec. Uh, there are quite a lot. We can see uh, there are around 500 plus uh, paths. And uh, assuming there are around uh, two actions uh, per path, so it's uh, roughly a uh, thousand APIs which are there specified in this specification. Um, Let's look at some of them. Um, this is the GIST API. Um, so this has a get action. Get will list the GIST. And um, it is in the GIST API set. And there are pointers to some docs. It takes three parameters. And these are the parameters. And it can give out these responses. So response code 200, which is the success response code, can have this as the uh, uh, an array of uh, this uh, struct as the response. And uh, you can also see an example of that. Now these links, which link to a uh, separate section of the spec. Uh, for example, the example is linking to components, examples, basis item, is there in another section that we, we shall see that shortly. But this, this is the way you can uh, modularize the spec. Um, so if the parameter is used in multiple APIs, we don't need to define it again and again, declare it again and again. So we, we, just, we just define it once and refer to it everywhere. Um, similarly, the post API, 
uh, the post action would uh, create a gist. Um, it also has a similar um, request body defined, uh, which can be of a certain schema. And uh, it can also respond with these response codes. 201 is the HTTP created response code, and uh, which can have this content. Right. Uh, let's now see the components section that we just spoke about. Um, let's go to the components uh, parameters section. Per page is one of the parameters we saw for the GIST API. And so this is where it is defined. Um, so this definition says that it should be named per underscore page. It should come in query params and uh, it should be an integer. And if it is not specified, the default value should be 30. And there is some description in the string. Um, similarly, there are other parameters defined. So this one named cursor is of type string. It also comes in queries and it is used for pagination and things like that. So, uh, similar to parameters, there are other schemas defined here. Uh, let's look at this one. Um, so this uh, describes some um, thing called an integration, and it has certain properties. It's a struct which has certain properties, and uh, the ID property should be an integer, and the slug property should be a string, and things like that. So this is roughly how uh, API spec looks um, like. Um, let's also quickly see how this thing um, shows up in the Swagger UI. Um, so open API package has this uh, method called Swagger UI and you just uh, point it to a specification. It is going to launch a Docker container and um, open up a certain port and give you the link. And if you click on that, it opens up with the spec. And the spec uh, is rendered uh, similarly to what we saw. So we have a list of endpoints and uh, the action bar here. But the good part of this UI is it lets us also use uh, Right out basically. So uh, right here. So if I want to try out this API, I can click on this. It will let me edit this. I can execute, and then it's going to uh, give me the response. Show me the response. So it's it's very useful when we want to like uh, 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 test out the API before actually using it. All right. So. The next step would be to generate the code. Um, so we use this open API generator, as I mentioned earlier, to generate the Julia package. Um, uh, so the open API uh, generator can be installed as a, an application, but it is also available bundled uh, as a Docker image, which is uh, more convenient because it lets us use it without having to install too many things. Um, so uh, I have a uh, script here, which makes use of the Docker container. So this is what the script looks like. So it just runs this container, which contains the open API generator, which the generate command and uh, passes the spec to it and instructs it to generate code into this folder. So let's just run it. It's a while and that will generate a folder uh, with the code inside it. Um, so the code is generated as a Julia module. Um, the module can be embedded uh, directly into another package. Um, or it's also structured uh, structure as a regular Julia package. So if you want to register it uh, straight away as, a, as an independent package, that's also possible. You just need to add a project.toml to it. Um, 
So if I list the folder, which was generated just now, um, I see a subfolder called source, and then there are docs, and there's a readme here. And if I list the sources, um, I see the main um, Julia file, source file for the package, and there are some other files that it will be including. We can quickly take a look. Uh, if I open the readme, um, this is actually quite interesting. Uh, let's show it. Uh, um, as a preview. So this is what it has generated. Um, it has uh, taken all the comments from the spec and uh, generated a nice API documentation for us. All of these are clickable and can drill down to more details for the API. Um, so there are uh, quite a lot of APIs in the spec. Uh, let's quickly look at the um, main module source. All right, so this is what it looks like. The module is called Julia Hub Plant. Um, the API version of the spec, and it has included uh, several files, uh, one for each API. Okay. Um, let us now try and uh, use the API. So to do that, uh, we just need to include the main module, right? So and uh, uh, include the uh, source file with the main module and uh, start using the module. And the next step would be to create a client for the API group um that we want to use so um let's say we want to use the uh, repos api set um we are going to uh, then need to create a client for that api set which is what this is doing so after this step we have uh, the uh, a struct called instance of a struct called repos api using which we can invoke any api in that API set um, the APIs can be invoked like regular Julia methods. Um, so we don't need to deal with HTTP uh, queries or post data or anything like that. Um, so it's all visible, um, translated to uh, Julia methods and Julia structs. Um, so here in this example, I am trying to uh, get the repo information for the Julia Lang Julia repo. So this is the repo name. This is the auth name. I'm using the uh, repos API handle. And uh, let's invoke the API. So this is going to connect to GitHub and send the required parameters and get the response. So what we got back is a lot of detail about the Julia, uh, the, uh, Julia repo. Um, it is uh, shown as a uh, JSON here, but it is actually a, a Julia struct. The, uh, the implementation is in a Julia struct, and we can access the members just like struct members like this. So, yeah, so, so Julia repo has uh, more than 42,000 stars at the moment. All right, so this was a overview of um, how we can use uh, open API um, to just access some web service. And we have also looked at the code generation process in some depth. Um, are there any questions? Okay. Yeah, there's a question. Uh, how stable on, or mature is open API? Um, yeah, so we open api.jl itself was uh, developed pretty recently, uh, a few months back. Um, and we are using it quite extensively in Julia Hub uh, without any issues. But it is still marked as a beta in the open API org uh, because it has been a, a recent contribution. 
um, it may not be perfect. And um, we may have uh, missed out a few things. Uh, we, in fact, have not implemented the full spec yet. But most of the uh, uh, widely used feature set is already implemented. Um, so yeah, we shall have a 1.0 pretty soon. Um, but right now, uh, it is not that bad. And uh, we are using it already in production. Are there any other questions? If not, that's uh, enough. And then move to the next part. All right, so. Having looked at the specs and uh, um, the open API generation in some depth, we can now attempt to write our own spec and also uh, try and deploy uh, an open API uh, server of our own. Um, so we're going to create a specification, we're going to generate code and docs, and we're going to implement and uh, deploy it as a service. Um, Let's do all that. So I have a set of um, notebooks for that. And before that, there is any question, I think. Uh, no, there are All right. So let's start with the uh, defining of a spec. OK, so in this example, we are going to create a web service, uh, a very simple web service uh, that can generate a list of prime numbers. And to do that, we shall use the primes package, uh, that's said in Julia. Um, so start with using open API, clean up a few things. Yeah, so the API is a JSON, so we can edit it. Uh, any editor, but um, there is a tool. There are many other tools, but uh, there is a tool that Open API embeds, which is the Swagger provided editor. Um, let's see how we can use that. So by invoking this method, Open API Swagger editor, and pointing it to a spec, um, we shall open the editor, similar to the viewer that we did. Uh, in the previous example. So now the editor is available at this port. And yeah, so this is how it looks. Uh, so I already have uh, prepared a simple spec. Um, so it just opened that same one, and it, but it lets me edit that here. Right. Uh, so on one side, I can edit the raw uh, JSON. On the other side, it shows us uh, one overview, um, which is rendered. And uh, it also lets me try it out just like the viewer. So if there is a service which is already running and uh, I am like writing the spec uh, um, postdoc, then I can also test it. Or if I have a mock up of the service which is prepared, and I'm writing a spec to match it, then I can test it right away here itself. Um, so in this spec, I have just uh, one um, uh, API, uh, which is a post to this resource. So um, I'm asking it to generate uh, prime numbers in a certain range. Um, to do that, the input will be um, a struct of this type, primes in range request, and the uh, output would be the prime numbers. So the primes in range request has two things. 
from and to both of which are integers. And uh, the response is an array of integers. So in the schemas, I have defined a simple um, object um, with uh, two properties. This is the request where I specify from and to. And as a response, I get another object with the property named prime, which is an array of uh, integers. Uh, I, uh, for the simple API, I, I could have avoided using uh, objects, um, but just to demonstrate how objects are uh, uh, used, uh, I have uh, used that here, done that here. So if, uh, uh, if I define a new uh, path, for example, let's try and add something else here. Um, let's say I want to count the number of requests that have been made to the service. I define an uh, endpoint like this. So the moment I define, it is available for me to explore here, right? So if I had a running service, I could try it out also. And if I make a mistake, for example, If I make a mistake, until I correct it, it's not going to appear here. So it's a, it's a very rudimentary tool. Uh, there are much more powerful tools. Um, so uh, SmartBear themselves have uh, more powerful tools that are available in their uh, uh, product portfolio. There are also other tools, for example, VS Code also has something integrated and uh, there are linters and uh, stuff like that, which, are, which can be used. All right, so once we have edited this, we can save it. And uh, I'm not going to save this, but because I already have it. Uh, so the next step would be to uh, go and generate the server and the client. So let's stop the editor. And uh, let's generate the code for that. So similar to what we had for the GitHub example, we have another script here. But this time, we are generating both the client as well as the server parts. All right, so we have with the server and the client generated now for us. The client is a complete package, but the server needs implementation. The server methods that we defined needs to be implemented, and those need to be done by us. So let's start doing that. So this is where we will uh, complete the implementation for server. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to use the primes package along with the open API. We are also going to use the HTTP package to host it um, as a web service. Um, let's quickly see the code that was generated for us. So the folder structure uh, has a main module, prime server. It includes APIs and models very similar to the client package. Um, all right, let's open the main model and see what it says. Okay, so this en encapsulates the generated server code, but we must implement this method, right? So that's a uh, 
implementation of the of, of the of the API. So, let's include the module, and uh, now we can add our uh, API implementation. So, so we just copy the signature that it asks us to implement. It should take uh, primes in range request and return primes in range. So we have got the primes in range request here. And we look at the from and the to, and then pass into the primes method of the primes package. And we get the output, which is an array vector. And we create a primes in range response, passing that. And that's it. So it's a very simple implementation. So once we have that, uh, we just invoke, uh, uh, we just call this register method of the generic code, which is going to do all the API path registrations for us in the HTTP router. And then we pass that to HTTP uh, serve and our server is up. So, so uh, it's, it's, it's up at port 9,999, and uh, now we can uh, start a client to access that. So let's see how we do the client, which is very similar to what we did for the GitHub client. Uh, start, when we use open API, include the client's module, and uh, we are going to create the um, client instance, API instance, and I've named it generate API. We are going to create our input, which is an instance of the struct. And I've passed from as five and to as 20. And we just invoke a regular children method, which is created for us. And uh, we can list out the primes. There we go. I can change this to let's say from twenty. All right. So that completes the demos. Are there any questions? Okay. Why don't we give it just a minute for questions? Sure. While we're waiting, I'll just uh, summarize. Uh, so what we did today is uh, we discussed open API and uh, we also touched upon a few related standards. And uh, we saw um, how open API is used. Um, um, what to invoke a service, and uh, how we can define our own spec and uh, create a service for it, deploy it. We also went through the list of packages that help us doing that. And uh, we used some common tools which are available for us uh, to help us in looking at specs and uh, defining specs. Yeah. Well, I think we can, I think we can wrap up. And of course, if folks have questions and they want to reach out to Tanmay, um, 
you're more than welcome to do that or funnel it through my email. Um, we will be sending up a follow-up email with the files, links to the files that Tanmay um, showed in this presentation, as well as a recording of today's webinar. So we thank you very much for attending, and we look forward to seeing you at future webinars. Thank you, Tanmay. Thank you.